so much for being here. Your presence is incredibly important to this process. But I want to start by thanking you for what you do every day. Your work in the classroom for our children here in Connecticut. You're on the front lines, and I've had the chance to talk and to meet with many of you and with administrators because I think it's so critical that we hear from those who are in the trenches, from those who are actually educating our children. We can't forget that in what some have called the education session for the legislature, that we cannot fix schools without listening to the people who teach our children. We sometimes forget that our public schools have a fundamental responsibility to our communities and to our families. Our public schools must accept every child. They must accept the children from rich families and from poor families. Those children who have had robust preschool experience and enrichment, and those children who have had none. The children who are homeless and come into your classroom in the middle of the school need year and need your help. The special needs students. The, Eng the English as a second language students. We do not say no to any child in our public schools. You all have had to make sense of the many shifts and changes in education policy in America, both good and bad, that began with no child left behind. It's not been easy. It's not been easy, but I want to thank you for sticking to your critical job of educating our children. You know, I also want to thank I also want to thank some other legislators, those who serve on our education committee. And I'm talking about Democrats and Republicans, most of whom who have, they've spent many years learning about education policy, watching the trends and fashions in education policy come and go. These legislators are committed to getting it right which is what we owe our children. The education bill that passed out of committee had the support of both Democrats and Republicans. There is, there is broad bipartisan support for real reform that values students, teachers, and our local schools. And we're going to continue to work hard and make sure we get it right for our children. As you know, the education bill that was approved shares our values. And those values include closing the achievement gap and making sure that all of our children have the tools they need to be successful. It includes ensuring that there are reliable and meaningful evaluations for teachers and administrators. It includes expanding access to early childhood enrichment and school readiness seats. Supporting families and students by increasing the number of family resource centers that provide after school programs and the school-based health clinics that meet the critical needs of our children. 
It includes increasing our investment in the struggling schools in our poorest communities that need our help. And it creates a stronger commitment to teachers by strengthening professional development opportunities. Now in summary, as you know, legislative leaders and the governor's administration are working hard to reach agreement on this legislation. But I want to tell you, as the comedian Jonathan Winters once said, I couldn't wait for success, so I went ahead without it. <laughs> We're not going to do that. When it comes to the education of our children, we can't afford to get it wrong. We are going to get it right because the stakes are too high. So thank you for your good work in an important and honorable profession. With your help, with your help, we will be successful for our children and their future. Thank you. Thank you.